I'd like to share to you something about uh, uh, this is the ministry that I'm involved with. Jaron Ministry. Kaya lang nakalib po ako dito for two years because another ministry uh, asked me to lead. This is the Global Filipino Movement na ang aim is to mobilize churches to see the peculiarity of the life of the OFWs. Hindi naman kaila sa inyo ang buhay ng mga OFWs, di ba? Ano kaya't sumagot kayo para magkaintindihan tayo? <laughs> okay, yan. Um, yung ang mga OFWs, based from the study that they made, the risk of becoming dysfunctional is so great. In fact, nung binanggit to sa akin ng Tega World Vision, 85% of OFW families, malaki yung chance na maging dysfunctional. And I know you would agree with this, with this one. And I've been working with OFW since 1998, in a sense, going from one place to another uh, with FCL, Foundations for Christian Leadership and Jaron Ministries. And I have seen a lot of this. At hindi po kaila sa inyo na ang buhay ng mga OFWs ay talagang napakahirap. Humiwalay lang eh. Ngayon lang eh. Humiwalay lang tayo sa ating mga misis. And ewan ko lang kung napakasaya nyo ha. Uh, malayo kayo sa inyong misis. Uh, maaring sinasabi niya this is a good break. Yeah, but hindi pwedeng hindi ka magtatawag eh. Because you are always wishing to be with your partner. Tama ho ba yun o tama? Tama? Uh, yeah. Kaya nakikita mo yun. Yung mga iba naghahanap ng signal eh. Kasi kailangan makausap ang mga mahal sa buhay. And we're talking about a mother or a father is away, not just for two days, three days. And we're talking about a year or two. At doon nagaganap yung mga hindi nila kasama sa plano pag OFW. Nagaganap yung, yung anak nagiging adik, yung anak nabubuntis ng wala sa oras, yung tatay na sumakabilang bahay, or siya mismo doon sa malayang lugar na lungkot, ay meron doon lukulukong mahusay sumilip ng mga nalulungkot, katulad ng katabi nyo dyan. <laughs> Ayan. And then, boom! Uh, they did not plan all those things. And that is why we're encouraging churches, try to look at the peculiarity. I, I don't want to call it special case. But the peculiarity, kakakaiba sila. Usually, pag dumarating sa atin yan, asking us, Please, Pastor, please pray for me kasi palis na po ako. Then we pray for them. But after that, ano to ha? 99%. And I'm very much sure to tone to to ito. After that, we do not go beyond that prayer. Really taking care of the yung mga na left behind, planning with them. We, we ask them to just join us. You go to the groups, you go, para ma... But there is something that is needed for these OFW families. Na, na yung church must be aware na kailangan nilang part yan kasi ng mga tupa natin eh. uh, at uh, natutuwa tayo pag aalis sila lalo na kapag sa prayer binabanggit mo pa yung size ng paa mo <laughs> uh, eight. wag mo kalimutan na eight, eight, eight. kahit 8 and a half pag Nike 9, pag Adidas 8 <laughs> eh. but anyway th- that's part of the ministry that I'm involved with ang Aking pong uh, kontrata sa kanila ay two years lang. And then afterwards, I'll be back again sa training ng mga pastors and church leaders. And it's been my passion, it's been my heart to be part of the training of pastors and church. I, I do not know Pastor Philip, but when I became a Christian, my pastor is one of those who goes for training of church leaders and pastors. And then after a year, I moved to another church, the same thing. The next pastor that I am with, is also someone who's involved in the training of pastors and church. At the early stage ng aking Christian life, pastoral life, I'm already involved in this group of uh, those who are doing this pastoral training. Hanggang ngayon, parang, parang ganun ang design ng Panginoon. I, I really don't know. Maihahain mo kasi ako eh. Uh, takot ako magsalita sa harap lang. But the Lord has a different plan. No? Sabi nga nila, maihahain pa ba yung ganyan? Uh, that was then, but the Lord... Yeah. Now, I'd like you to look at this passage, this familiar passage. The first one is uh, the Great Commission, Jesus giving us the Great Commission. And then the second one is the Apostle Paul sharing or giving a command to Timothy about uh, multiplication. And then Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, he's telling this to a group of believers. 
In Colossae, let's read Matthew 28, 19 to 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Would you mind reading it, please? Okay, and then in Colossians 1, 28 to 29, he said, We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. Now, I'd like you to look at these passages. And, and, and see, ano yung ini-impress sa yo? What, what, what can you see? Uh, something that is common here. May we hear from you, please? Ano yung nakikita mo? Nakikita mo, ha? It might not be written out there. Pero nakikita mo, mayroon tong implication na. What, what can we see? Ha? Huh? Sige, isa-isa lang po. Pa, tsaka ilakas nyo yung bulong nyo dyan para marinig natin. Ha? Huh? Teach. Teach. Unsa pa? Nano pa? Influence. Okay, good. Instruction and trust. Now, all of those things are right, right? But one thing that I saw here is this. We are all given an opportunity to become part of another person's life. We were given the privilege to help someone to become a disciple of Christ and become a mature one. Now, this is a great privilege because the Lord has given us this privilege of becoming part of someone's spiritual journey to maturity. And it might begin from where? From the point of his salvation, right? You go and make disciples there. Until such time that this person will become matured and himself multiplying himself. Right? So, yun sa passage na yun, I hope you can see na yung privilege na ito ay pinagkaloob sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Forming leaders. We are all together here because we are part of topic. And one way or another, we are all part of the work in terms of developing others, developing leaders, or we call this as forming leaders. To help our leaders become truly biblical leaders, we must focus on the biblical leadership that transforms hearts. Without heart transformation, we will never reach the potential we have as a Christian and as part of a movement. This is what God wants for all His children. We strike first the very, very issue. And what is that? Heart issue. We, we we're talking about character here. Alam niyo po sa FCL, tsaka sa Jaron, and I guess in so many organizations, there are three things that we are always making uh, as emphasis. One, character, and that's number one. Two, knowledge. Pero hindi dapat nauna yung knowledge. Dapat nas nauunang nasishape yung tinatawag natin na mga biblical character o yung tinatawag natin na godly character. And then skills. And I'm always telling sa lahat po ng ating mga seminars sa mga training, you know, you can fool someone because you are good or eloquent speaker, but you cannot fool them all throughout your life the moment you have this problem with your character. Pag may issue ka sa pera, masisilip yan. Pag may issue ka sa babae, masisilip yan. Uh, pag may issue ka sa pagkatao mo, masisilip yan. Um, minsan yung iba sa atin nagtatagos sa kasuutan ng lalaki. Uh, oh, meron yan. Uh, Noong nasa camp kami, biglang hindi nakatiis, nanggapang yung pastor. Ang laking shock no. Lalo na sa misis niya. Because if we're not careful, if we're not really... Uh, having this kind of dealing with heart issues, ang problema nito, we will also be reproducing the kind of us. Uh, forming leaders. We want to form leaders. But what kind of leaders we want to form? So ang issue natin dito, we begin with the heart. Heart issue. And I'm always, uh, I always appreciate guys who will be standing here and talking to us about heart issues. Heart issues. All right? This is what God all... Uh, God wants for all His children. Again, let me share you some passage. For those God foreknew, He also predestines to be what? Conformed. 
through the likeness of His Son. What's the priority? Christ likeness. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed uh, into His likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Colossians 1.28-29 Ito po yung passage natin. Ito po yung gustong gusto ko eh. Lalo na yung binanggit niya yung word na we. This is not just somebody's work. This is our work. Uh, we, we work together. Kaya maganda nga yung atin dito. We call labor. Nung binabasa ko ito kahapon, parang mali ata ito. Collaboring. 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 Ako, laboring pala. Kasi akala ko collaborating. Parang gano'n. <laughs> Kaya nga nakapu ako dito, inakaming alongside. Collaboring. Meron bang word na collaboring? Collaboring pala. Kaya, hindi nga ako marunong magbasa. Ha. Anyway, so, eh, yun ang gustong-gusto natin makita dyan eh. It's not really somebody, just one person's business. Maganda yan, it's topics business. And everyone must be committed to this one, that I will be involved in the transformation of another person's life. But that's not just by you, it's by us, especially in the power and control of the Holy Spirit. Right, forming spiritual leader. This is Ma- uh, David. Is, hindi ko pa po ito nakita sa tanang buhay ko. Sa Europe ata ito. Eh, no? Pero may magandang kwento dyan eh. Let's read it. The block of marble that became Michelangelo's larger than life sculpture of David lay almost untouched in the cathedral storehouse in Florence for decades. Two other sculptors have attempted to make something of it before it was offered to Michelangelo. One started working with it, but soon quit because his talents lay in more delicate work. Now, that block of marble is 18 feet high, right? And then 16 feet high, nung matapos yung David sculptor na yun. One, uh, <coughs> the great Leonardo da Vinci turned down an opportunity to transform it, preparing to pursue another project more suited to his days. When offered the opportunity, Michelangelo agreed to do what others could not. He built a shed around the block of marble, which he kept locked at all times. For three years, he labored to transform it from its natural state to an eternal work of art. Three years, ah, mga kapatid, mga kaigsoon, kabisad, kabalen, kauturan. Three years. Ibig sabihin, I mean, as I look at this, yung transformation of something is not an overnight thing. Don't expect your yung disciple mo na tomorrow, katulad mo na siya. Right? It, it's, it is something that will go into a process. At first, sabi niya, first Michelangelo examined the marble minutely to see what poses it would accommodate. He made sketches and models of various possible creations and then tested his ultimate image in a small-scale wax version in his final result. Finally, he picked up his mallet and chisel and began to work. When Michelangelo looked at that block of marble, this is something that we need to uh, remember, he did not see what it couldn't be. He saw what it could be. He didn't reject because it, is, it was flow, just like our disciples, and dami sablay, just like us. Pero hindi mo titignan siya dun sa kanyang sablay. He saw a way to work around the flows even to incorporate them into his design. What he did was so great, even evident flows could not scar its beauty. There are drill marks in David's thick uh, curled hair. Some of the original quarry marks are on the very top of the head, and one can see traces of the cuttings made by the earlier sculptor 40 years before, failed to do what Michelangelo did, create one of the greatest masterpieces of all times. I like what he said here. He did not see what it couldn't be. Sometimes we are blocked by the idea of seeing the flows of our people that we want to disciple. And And if you're going to look at the 12 disciples, even Jesus during his life, he said, until now you have not learned. Uh, even nung papaalis na siya, sablay pa rin ang mga sinasabi ng mga disciples. But again, we look at ourselves. Kung tayo ang pagbabasihan, hindi na rin tayo ubra. Uh, but the Lord has a different look when it comes to His disciple. So this is the, the whole uh, 
masterpiece that was done by Michelangelo. Uh, huwag nyo nang tingnan kung ano yung nakatago. <laughs> Hindi pala nakatago, ano? <laughs> yeah. 16 feet po yan. That means, kung 18 feet yan, ang laking pukpuka na chiseling ang magaganap niya. Diba? Same thing with developing someone in the leadership. It will take time. It will take a lot of uh, labor. Now, Michelangelo's work on his sculpture, David is a picture of work in leader formation. Now, I'd like you to read this one. It is our magnificent privilege to be God's instrument. Amen? It is a, it, it's magne- a magnificent privilege to be God's instrument in sculpting the souls of his people through leader formation as drawn from the principles of spiritual formation. That's what I'm saying. This is a great privilege. You are here. We are here. God chosen us in order to become some part of somebody's life into the journey of this person, a journey of this person into spiritual maturity. That one day, when you're about to, and then one day, I'll cross that river. I can't help because I, I'm connecting to this one. How many Leaders that you were born will be saying, I was discipled by this guy. I am like this because of this guy. Uh, so this is a great privilege. We, we are nothing. Eh. Wala naman tayong kay nga. But the Lord has given us the privilege to become part of somebody's life. And, and, and if we, we are seeing him succeeding, if we are seeing him developing himself and becoming even better than you, we should be rejoicing. The first pastor that I, uh, the first pastor that trained me, was able to train more than 30 pastors. Became pastors, huh? uh, and they are around the Philippines doing a lot of work for the Lord. Now, again, our passage is this: We proclaim Him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect or mature in Christ. That is our end result. Yun ang gusto natin makita. Uh, kung meron tayong ina-asher, makita natin. Uh, this is actually the joy of so many leaders uh, who are involved in the transformation of others. Meron silang uh, nakikitang yan. Sabi niya, to this end I labor, struggling with all this energy which so powerfully works in me. Now, what is our purpose in forming others? Why do we involve in presenting others perfect or mature on Christ? Answer, number one is to glorify God, which is the, the reason, the main reason, the ultimate reason. 1 Corinthians 10.31, uh, whether we, therefore, whether we eat or drink, or whatsoever we do, do it all for the glory of God. But here, we are so specific to glorify God by helping others and ourselves become Christ-like through the Holy Spirit's enablement. Answer number two, to become the kind of people today as Christ's body who do what Christ did through his body when on earth, seek and save the lost. We ought to obey the Great Commission and involve in others' lives through discipleship or mentoring. So let me encourage you with this. You are in the right place. Being part of topic, you are in the right place. You have the right people that is going to be with you. Not the likes of Pastor Philip, Nathan Costas, and the Reverend Most Holy Hill Balignasai. <laughs> and we have our great teacher, uh, Herman Moldes, that will mold <laughs> all of us into. <laughs> now, kaya lang, we don't transform someone in the power of the Lord just for the sake of transformation. That's not the end of it. We must have a purpose beyond making people good. They must be good for something. Again, kung sakaling yung, tina, yung dinidevelop mong yan, kung sakaling lilisa na rin sa mundong ito, merong iiwan din legacy. Uh, hindi lang yung basta... Now, you might be in a small place, I mean, in a not, not known place, but in that, that small place, they will be saying, oh, si ganito... Ang laki, ng, ang laki ng influence. You mentioned influence, di ba? Ang laki ng influence sa amin yan. 
or the other way around. Ah, sige, no? buti nga, namatay na yan eh. Uh, mas lalong mahirap yun. Mayroon akong kilalang ka, nasa, hindi na akong madulas, hindi ko naman sabi, nasa Palawan ako noon, Palawan. <laughs> Mayroon kaming ano doon, isang Bible student, who turned later on, naging mayor. And minsan, nasa isang lugar ako, nasira yung bridge. And sabi nung kasi, kaibigan kong pastor, nagkakonda kami training. Uh, sumabay ka na lang dito sa ano, uh, municipal administrator yun ng isang lugar at saka isang engineer. Doon ako sa likod. Hindi naman ako pinakilala nung ano, pinasabay lang. Pakisabay niyo na ako si Pastor Lito. Ah, sige, sige. Kukwentuhan sila. Pinagkukwentuhan itong, itong dating Bible student na naging pastor na naging mayor. Panay mura sila doon. At ito yung pinakamasakit noon. Sa bandang huli. Pastor pa naman. <laughs> Halos magsumiksik ako doon sa likod ng upo. At <laughs> Buti na lang ako, hindi ako pinakilalang pastor. Uh, para bang may iniwan siyang legacy. Alam mo, yan yung nangurakot ng lupa, yan yung ganito, yan yung ganyan. Now, and we have, we have heard a lot of leaders who did not finish well. Tama o tama? Ang dami natin narinig doon eh. Ang dami natin nakitang sikat, ang gagaling. Pumapalakpak tayo, kahit na anong grupo yan. Kahit anong denomination yan. Lagi silang merong pambato. Tama? Meron silang laging yan. Amin yan. Mapabaptist yan, mapentecostal yan, full gospel yan, mormons o ano man yan. <laughs> yan. Laging meron yan. Kaya lang yung misa, kung gaano kasikat, at kung may nangyari, hindi ka maganda. Paglagapak nun, sama rin tayo. Tama? Sama rin tayo sa bagay na ganyan. Kaya lang, ang maganda nito, hindi mo na kailangan maging isang sikat na sikat para magpakabuti. Kahit saan ka naroon. Nasa isang maliit na bayang ka o nasa isang malaki kang syudad, ang importante doon, nasa tamang lugar ka at ginagawa mo yung tama para sa ating Panginoon. And you will be known as someone who is living a Christ-like character. Hindi nabibili yan. Diba? Hindi, hindi nakikipag-kompromiso yan. They must be good for something. Now, let me give you some observation about formation of leaders. You form leaders the way God forms you, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not by us. And don't you ever claim that this person becomes like this because of me. Kasi danger yan eh. When it comes to leaders' formation, it is always good to see someone nagiging sikat, nagiging magaling ganyan, and then at the back of your mind, sabi, hindi naman magiging ganyan, kundi dahil sa akin. Mahirap yun. Mahirap yun. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1 to 5, And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear. Look at those, ah. Huh? Yun yung, yung mga bagay na hindi mo may pagmamalaki. But He's declaring it. Uh, uh, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom. And sometimes we are so... Um, amazed or um, uh, ang tawag doon, amused by those eloquent speakers. Sabi mo, gusto ko maging katulad niya. Gusto ko maging... Maganda yun eh. Pero ito maganda nating i, ano, iporso. Ang sabi niya rito, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. Kapag tinignan kalila, nakikita si Kristo. Kapag tinignan kalila, sasabihin nila, praise the Lord, ang galing ng Panginoon kumikilo sa kanyang buhay. Hindi ikaw. Pag the moment na ikaw nakita, malapit ka na. Uh, malapit ka na. <laughs> Inaaga mo na yung glory ng ating Panginoon. Na pag pumalakpak sila, tanggapin mo. Tapos ialay mo kay Lord. Kasi minsan yung minsan pa, humble effect, hindi naman. Tapos <laughs> sinabing, ang galing, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Bigay mo kay Lord yung offering na yun. Ibato mo lagi sa Kanya. Uh, we are sharing the glory because He's manifesting in us. At kapag nagpuri sila para sa Panginoon, kunin mo, ihandog mo sa Panginoon. Uh, iba yung kay Satan, eh, nakikita niya naghahandog sa Panginoon, gusto niyang kunin. Ikaw naman, kapag nakita nila si Christ sa buhay mo, tanggapin mo yun. Yung mga kumakanta, mausay kumanta. Ang galing. 
Tapos pag sinang ganda ng kanta mo, hindi naman, sarap batukan. <laughs> eh kung talagang maganda pagkakakanta mo, di sabi mo, praise the Lord, ang ganda. Uh, encourage ka ba? Oh, yeah, purihin natin ang Panginoon. But don't you ever, ever claim anything na naging maganda. That's because of you. It is always because of the Holy Spirit that is working in us. We always point everything to God. There are two chief requirements for leader developer. One, he knows the ways of God in developing others. Take note of this, huh? He knows the ways of God, not our own ways. Not even our own principles. Not my way. Prank sinatra naman yan eh. Uh, kakamatayan natin yan. Diba? Misan marami tayong mga tinatry eh. Uh, okay lang yan. But mas maganda when we go and align everything in the plan of God. The ways of God. He consciously discerned response to the ways of God in developing Him. Alright? Make me know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. No one can say, I have already arrived. Tapos na ako, hindi eh. It is always a daily thing na tayo ay ano, natututo. <laughs> Sa tagal po namin, no? si Pastor Hill, Francis Canlas, kasama namin sa FCL. Since 1998, may ikot-ikot kami. Ang pinakamahirap turuan, alam niyo kung sino yung pinakamahirap turuan? <laughs> yung may mga titulong, ah, ano ako, Bible School graduate ako. Oh, may mga seminary titles pa. Oh, lalo na yung mga. Lalo na kapag may doctorate degree. Kaya nga kami, hindi na kami naghahangad ng mga yan, ano, Hill? <laughs> so, totoo lang, yun ang pinakamahirap. Alam mo, ginagawa namin, encourage namin, let you join us. Kasi we want to uh, recruit more possible facilitators and teachers. So, na-encourage sila pag-upo doon. Pagating doon, ay, ang hirap pala niya. Uh, then they realize, iba pala, ang hirap pala. Kasi titles can be deceiving. Lalo na ngayon, dalawa ko ng mga titulo. Ah, ayaw niyo akong tanggapin bishop. Walang-alang ito. Mag-form tayo ng bishop, bishop group natin. Sanda makmak na ngayon ng mga bishop. Dawa? Meron kami kilala. O, pa- paano ka nakakuha niya? Habi, bro, 8,000 lang. Doctorate degree. 8,000. 8,000. Sabi, ano naman to eh? Ganyan, ganyan. Yung 8,000 para daw ipakain sa tao. Ganyan, bigyan ka ng toga. Ganyan. Anong ginawa? Wala, yun lang. May bibigyan ka ng doctorate degree. So, maloset ka ako yan. Ha? Kung kayo po ay ganon, <clears throat> Patawarin tayo ng Panginoon. <laughs> Kung kayo po ay nahuhumaling sa paghangad ng titulo, naka... Ma- ang hirap po, no? yun yung mga titulong hindi mo maisabit. Kasi pag nakita, ano yan? Paano ka nagkaroon niya? At inulang ka na ng tanong. Sabi mo, tanggalin niyo na nga yan. Ha? Tanggalin niyo na. And you know what I'm talking about. Ha? So, but let's learn, let's learn from the Lord, His ways, from His Word. Much, much better ito. Number three, self-awareness through God, under, through God, understanding and delighting in doing God's will is true wisdom and maturity for the leader developer. Okay? Let me show you this one. Yung mallet, tsaka yung chisel. Leaders will not become whole until they are, what? Broken. And uh, was it in wow when I heard this one that God allows us to be broken, right? God allows us to pass this uh, hindi lang isa o dalawa. Eh. A lot of reasons for us to be broken. Okay? There had to be much brokenness before there can be wholeness. Now this is what I'm mentioning. 18 feet yung marble. Tapos, 16 feet yung total na height niya, pagkatapos. That means, there must be a lot of breaking na gagawin. There must be a lot of tapping. There must be a lot of chiseling. Alright? First, God taps in our lives. Okay? Then, He chips a little. Now, these are the, the 
yung mga brokenness sa buhay natin. Right? Then, He drills a hole. Then, uh, finally, a bang. And look at the result. The image of Christ appears in us. So, if there are brokenness that are coming to us, um, consider it all joy, brethren, when you have brokenness coming in into our lives. Ano ni mga brokenness na nagaganap sa atin? May I hear from you? Ano ni mga brokenness na yan? Yun, ano pa? <laughs> disappointment. disappointment. Anong klaseng disappointment? Hindi ma-meet yung expectation mo sa church. Disappointment. Ako, I learned a lot. When I resigned from our church, 1997-98, and decided to become a missionary, nag-mission po ako sa Tarlac for four years, church planting work, I realized na yung mga promises are good for one month only. Pastor, akong mahala. After one month, wala na pumapasok sa, may kinakausap kang makina na meron kang card. Tapos pagkuha mo, iiling-iling ka na naman, wala na naman laman. <laughs> Disappointments. What else? Ano yung mga brokenness? Naranasan natin. Ako naranasan ko po kapatid yung, yung anak ko nakatingin sa akin. Nagkakaroon siya ng problema sa tiyan. Nagkakalat siya ng dumi. Nakatingin sa akin. Hindi ko may pasok sa hospital. Kasi sa hospital, hindi ka tulad ng sine. Sa hospital, pag pumasok ka, libre. Palabas may bayad. <laughs> sa sine, pagpasok mo may bayad. Eh. Palabas libre. Naranasan ko, alam mo, yung nung maliliit sila, Pag tinaalala, naiiyak sila pag naaalala. Eh, no? Yung pupunta kami sa Bira Mall sa Green Hills. Eh doon meron yung sakaya ng kabayo, yung uga, yung ano, yung jug-jug, na, ba? huluga mo ng piso. At tingin ako sa paligid, wala naman tao, sasakay ko yung anak ko, ugain ko na lang yun. <laughs> yeah! Tuan-tuan na siya noon. Uh, may lapit yung guardian. Sir, 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 baka masira. Hindi, okay lang yan. <laughs> pag iniisip namin yun, naiiyak kami. Huh? Kasi wala eh. Those are brokenness sa buhay namin. But the more I think about that, the more I realize, the more uh, it strengthens my faith. Eh. Ayun, marami pa tayong kwento. And I'm very much sure you have the same stories. Like, nakapag-umaharap kayo, nagte-testimony about brokenness sa buhay natin. Uh, some of us might be shedding tears as you remember those things. But you will always say, those are God's way. for me to become more like Him. And I hope that is the result. Okay? <clears throat> Observation number four. No leader is developed unless his gifts and skills are developed. But skills are what? Not enough to form a, a follower into a leader. He has been working to transform your heart, to bring you to the place of brokenness. So you would learn to love. So you would know what it means to take up the cross. So you would learn this very important lesson. I'd like you to read it with me. That who the leader is, is far more important than what the leader does. Now, the world is a different philosophy. The world is basing success through activities and great works. You know, I know one guy, when I, when I became a Christian sometime in 1980, I really loved this guy preaching. Ano, ang galing-galing niya, hinihila-hila niya yung kanyang microphone, nakakalagay niya. Pag gusto niyang kumanta, he can sing the song, uh, playing the piano. And when he preaches, parang kalagang ano. Ang galing niya, sabi ko nga. But one day, he was caught in his car with another woman. And he was doing that since he was 17 years old. Hindi nahuhuli. And we might say, okay na yon, Kasi ang ganda naman ng ginagawa niya. He has a worldwide ministry. He has a, a, a tremendous influence. No, but the Lord is not interested with what we are doing. He's interested with what is going on in our life. He said, many will come to him and said, we have done this, we have done this. So I said, you go away from me, you doers of evil work. Huh? Anong gusto makita ng Panginoon? Yung transform heart. Yung gusto niya makita yung karakter. Kung sino ka. Kung sino ka. Leadership is influence growing out of competence. Two things yeah. Competence and 
character. Leadership consists of two dimensions. The functional, ito yung activities natin, and the foundational, that is our character. The foundational is the key to functional. Maaaring magaling ka ngayon, later on, pag na-discover na character mo is flawed, hindi ka na kukunin ulit yan. And sometimes this is the problem. We hide ourselves in our skills. We try to cover them up by becoming busy and full of activities. And this is, no, ako, I have to examine myself kasi kaliwat kanan, dami namin ginagawa. Pastor Hill, mga ganyan. Now, bakit? Ang tanong, bakit? Now, we have to really examine ourselves. And the same thing with you. Misa meron tayong ginagaya Misa meron tayong inaambisyon. Now, those are good things, provided that we do not neglect the very foundational one. That is the development of our character. Formation must confront the root issues in leaders. Ano ni mga root issues? Ay, ay, kayo na po mag-isip noon. But a form leader is an integrated person. A form leader has the mind of Christ. A form leader has the hands of Christ, and a form leader has the heart of Christ. It's all about transformed heart. It's all about Christ-likeness. It's all about who we are in the sight of God. A form leader has a heart that has been broken through death, burial, and resurrection. Now, let me close with this. The people whom we shepherd come to us with quarry marks and cuttings made in their lives by other sculptors long before we begin our ministry. You're getting the point here? Those who are coming to us, maybe he came from pastor so-and-so, and you can see parang marami tong sablaya. Right? <clears throat> they have flows from their past. Shame, guilt, anger, bitterness, pride, Fear, everything seen causes over decades of pursuing the foolishness of our age scars their soul. Like Michelangelo, we cannot allow these flows to stop us from taking our cross-like mallet and beginning to cut away at the marble of their hearts. Of course, we consult with the master artists, spending long blocks of time in prayer for them, seeking to discern how to meet their needs from his word. We chip away at the fault marks of their souls, tapping first gently, then firmly, until the pride, the anger, the hatred, the fear, whatever it is, falls away. And a little bit more of David appears. Ours is not a one. A three-year project, of course. Ours is a one. A lifetime project. Or as much time as the master artist chooses to use our hands to create his work of art in them. Gradually, we see the marble of their hearts transform into the beauty of David, and we rejoice that the day is coming when we present them complete in Christ. It will be a great day when the master artist decides where they should be placed on view of eternity. Eh, ito pa yung maganda. Pagkatapos mong hubugin, kaya bigla magpapaalam sa'yo, Pastor, doon na ho ako doon pupunta. Uh, parang, pagkatapos kang kaarugain, pagkatapos kang pakain, yung masasabihin mo, hindi. You will be rejoicing, praise the Lord. Because I'm seeing myself in another place, even if I am here. Because I have reproduced, through God's power, through God's working in my life, I have reproduced someone who's going to be used by God. Kapag nagtagumpay siya, tagumpay na rin natin yon mga kaigsuhanan. What a privilege to know we participated with Christ in creating an eternal work of arts in the hearts of men and women. He has chosen to place them in our hands, and we have chosen to give him our hands. So it is we labor, even, and this is true, agonize over these works of art, while he mightily empowers us to transform flowed souls into completed men and women. This is what we call spiritual formation. Serving as, what? Sculptors of the soul. No honor could be greater. No responsibility higher. No accountability more. We must take this task as the most serious task we will ever have in time of eternity. Getting rich is okay. Getting knowledge is okay. Getting all these titles is okay. 
But one thing that we want to really see in ourselves, that God will greatly use us in the transformation of others, especially leaders who will be involved in transforming others as well. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you this morning thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity. And I do pray, Lord, that whatever we have seen here, whatever we have <clears throat> heard, allow us, Lord, to contemplate it and allow it, Lord, to flood our hearts and minds so that we will be like you in implementing this one. In Jesus' name.